What's going on, everybody? How are we doing tonight? Hope everybody's well. It's good to see you guys. Who is in the hizzy? Hizzy wizzy. We got JC Cool number one, Husker Power two, Slytherin, Ralph, Daniel, Frankie, Dami, Sean, <laughs> Stephen Cross, Joe W. James, Queefer, Randy, Oscar, Nate Dog, Linda. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you. The same to you. I'm a little tired, but I'm good. Yo, yo, IQIY. What's that one? I missed that one. What's up, Dan? How we doing? What to do, what to do. Kathy, what's up? Jasper. Good to see you guys. Oh, hold on. I hear a child. Sorry, guys. One second. <laughs> Sorry. A child that I thought was asleep is not asleep. So give me one minute, guys. I'll be right back. <laughs> Darn daylight savings time, screwing up everything. Oh, everybody else not recovered yet from that? Drive me nuts. Anyways, he's okay. <laughs> wow, what a day, right? Um, CPI, we're going to go over that today. We're going to go over Alpine today. What's going on with that? There's a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about today. So really incredible. Just one of those days which makes you go, huh? But Anyways, let me catch up with you guys real quick, and then we'll start going through some stuff. Paul, and you got the notification. Catch you later. You're in the delivery room. Man, congratulations, Apollyon. Boy or girl, what you having, man? Good luck to you, buddy. International med distribution. Greetings from Costa Rica. All right. Jack, all right, all right. He's back. Yeah, Joe, you're a basic asshole. <laughs> Oh, that's Netflix of China. Yeah, okay. Okay. We do need a win, Randy. It's got to come eventually for sure. GTI and Finger both ready to run, says Goodwill. I love that. That's what I want to hear. GTI today, 1.3 million shares traded and it moved a cent. It moved a freaking cent. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Phil, what's going on? Donna. Let's see, Randy, you're thinking we could see a rise in all short stocks? I think it could be coming for sure. Kathy's present. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, let me let me start pulling some stuff up here because I've got a lot to go through. Um, first of all, let me see here. One second. It's moving a little slow. Sorry, guys. All right, so today CPI came in hotter than everybody was predicting. That's even with the jump, even with the jump, hotter than everybody was predicting, just insanity, nonsense. It's like, it's just crazy. But the um, it went up and then the markets didn't go down, which is just insanity because this whole market has been predicated upon the rise of um, the the rise of chance of rate cuts which means inflation's going away now inflation's coming in hotter and hotter and yet the market is going up it makes no sense it tells you it's all fake okay the entire stock market's fake they planned this as they had to know something's coming and they had to know that they were just 
going to plan on this. So now we're down to prediction markets officially expecting less than three interest rate cuts, which, by the way, I've been saying this whole time, first rate cut, if it happens, will be September. If this keeps going up, there will be no rate cut. There might even be a rate hike. That's what I'm telling you. After CPI increase for the second straight month, prediction markets see 65 BPS of rate cuts in to, uh, 2024. I doubt that. This is equivalent to 2.6 rate cuts and down sharply from six just two months ago. It's also the first time this year markets see less rate cuts than the Fed guidance. Core inflation is still at 3.8%, nearly double Fed's long-term target. Can we see zero rate cuts in 2024? Uh, I'm, this is... This is nuts that the stock market went up after this. I'm just telling you that is, that's a, it's a it's a big deal. It's a big mess, but we're gonna go through over some stuff tonight that shows you that uh, I think there's gonna be a lag effect, and I do think we're gonna still see a lot of volatility because March is being cray cray. It's being cray cray, and it's only a matter of time. There, it definitely looks like they're playing some. Uh, Tom, what up? Daylight savings destroyed peace at bedtime with your kids too. Yeah. Daylight savings sucks, man. When are we going to get rid of this? Uh, I'm not going to lie. If 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 Joe Biden was like, hey, I'm going to get rid of daylight savings time in my next term, I'd be 0.01% more tempted to vote for him. <laughs> it's not much. <laughs> um, Oscar, anyone have a guess on rum running? No, I have no idea. Rumble did have an awesome day. It's because that awesome news that came out yesterday with their cloud. This big, big deal. Um, Crito, no Trento deal. Wonder what it could be and will wait a long time to get it done. So I have no idea. I did not hear anything on Trento, but Ham did post that today. That looks like Trento is officially over. And the way I look at it is um, we're, we're going to see one of three things out of it. Okay. Or you can take it one of three ways. Let me put it that way. If all your hope was in Trento, then you're going to be devastated, and that sucks, and I'm sorry for you. And obviously, it was a big possibility that's been looming over our heads with GTI for two years. So two years still hasn't happened, but now we know it's it's gone. That sucks. Number two, we could just go back to saying GTI, like, it didn't happen, and it hasn't happened, whatever, It's nothing's changed, okay you know, and just kind of be like, whatever. I, I never thought it happened anyway. So that's the other thing. The third way you can look at it is you could say, well, at least they're finally moving past it. At least it's finally, they couldn't get it done. They're moving on. That's maybe some else has come up that works better for them. Obviously out the, the money that could have come with Trento, that was going to be hard to beat, but it could be they're they're working on something else and it just worked out better for them. And you could actually see it as as a positive sign it, it just depends how you want to look at it it honestly changes nothing for me because my hopes weren't in trento i just knew trento could blow it up so but um yeah i have i don't have any extra information on that uh, all i can tell you is that i know that i know that i know and richard has already talked about it in his video that gti is up to something and i think it'll be something really good for all of us so that's that's what i'll say for that and um honestly based on like what Goodwill's saying with what's going on in the stock right now and what else is uh, working on the company, Trento, no Trento, I think GTI is is a good place to be right now. And it's trending up in my opinion. I think I think we still have momentum on our side. So, and I'll tell you this, Ham doesn't seem concerned about it. He sure is talking about it more. So, and obviously uh, prayers to Ham and his son. His son went through surgery today. Um, I heard it went well. Um, and now it's just recovery time. And so monitoring. So anyways, we'll just send prayers out to his son for a fast recovery. Susan, what's going on? Dubois. Um, you're the seventh largest MMTLP shareholder MVP. How do you know that? Goodwill. We've got to break 30 and then we're off to 44.59 on GTI. Nice. I, I mean, we're close to breaking 30 real soon here. Matthew Parker. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Uh, thank you so much for the donation. I could maybe buy some more GTI with that. <laughs> Finally, I've been really strapped. It's my wife's birthday this month, so you can imagine all my money is gone. Your beat down, the beat down ZJ Well, hopefully Univest steps in. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, I don't know anything about ZJ Well and Univest being together. 
Way too much political pressure on J-Pow to cut rates. In my opinion, I'll destroy any hope with soft landing. He's not going to cut. I'm telling you right now. I don't think Powell cares about the politics side of it. I really don't. I think he is just like, F you guys. <laughs> I'm going to do what I do. That's what it seems like to me with Powell. Um, if it was a political thing, he would already cut. I can almost guarantee that. So, um, all right, catching up. Jesse, you're flying out on a Boeing jet in the morning. God bless you, sir. We, we pray for safety for you. Um, I don't know what's going on with ZJ Wild right now, Lafayette. It's just, uh, it's just an attack. I don't think anything else is, um, is to say on it right now. Um, Goodwill says losing Trento is not a game changer for me. If anything, it restores my faith in him for getting in front of it. There you go. Yeah. He did not, he's not pussyfooting around, not lying about it. So it's good. They called and confirmed your holdings for the audit. That's crazy. Seventh biggest holder. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Univest's finger. That's right. And I do think we'll see some on that soon. Okay. Uh, great tweet today. I'm going to keep going through financial stuff, jumping back and forth. You guys know how I roll, but <clears throat> there's just too much interesting stuff to talk about. Um, so I'm actually going to skip this right now. Let me get to, um, all right. So Alpine today, we got big news out of Bloomberg on Alpine. Kristen Shaughnessy talks about it here. Alpine has a concentrated short position GTII. Case similar to Alpine suit against FINRA to be appealed. Broker dealing not likely to succeed on claims. Alpine Securities Core isn't entitled to a court order preserving the status quo in disciplinary proceedings. When it challenges a regulator's authority, Alpine will appealing ruling. So they're appealing this ruling, but Alpine just lost a big ruling. In other words, this the preserving the status quo is is the fact that Alpine cannot stay doing business as a broker dealer while it's going through court against the uh, NSCC. So that's a big deal. That means that they finally ruled against Alpine on this, which means they have uh, basically carte blanche now to expel Alpine, stop them from being a broker dealer, doing their transactions uh, even until they win their case. And so um, before Alpine was has been getting it uh, suspended so they can keep doing business while also fighting this court case. And now it's been told to them they can no longer do that. So this could completely be the end of Alpine. It is on appeal, but um, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see here. Ad writer on Rumble says, you guys shall be watching on Rumble. YouTube sucks. Rumble stock over a dollar today. Well, eventually, I'm sure I'll be over on Rumble a lot more. That is that is true. But for now, I'm splitting between, and definitely most people are still on YouTube, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, Goodwill says this is huge news. The whole reason they're still breathing was a stupid case. He's absolutely right. And um, this, I mean, I they they uh, they did an emergency appeal. It was quick. They got it right up there. I don't think this will last. Um, I think that will also be overturned. They they really don't have much to stand on. And if it goes over fast, say in the next couple of weeks, which we can hope, then um, that means they basically, until uh, the Supreme Court makes its ruling in June, um, they have three months, they can't do anything, and they're already broke. So this is really, really good news for us. Gretchen, either Pedro or Dirty Mayo said something today about how GTI thing is obviously not Trento or AI. What did he mean? I don't know. I don't know, Gretchen. Um, and any guesses I have, I, I just, I have ideas, but I just can't speak to them right now. There's some things that um, I've heard, but I just, some things I just can't say. But we'll see. Um, I'm not 100% on them. Old Fines, it's on. What's up? Goodwill, that dragged on on. And we're allowed their 30 day appeals with their other legal. Pro I know it's been, it's the whole Alpine ordeal has been a great example of just how corrupt and messed up our whole system is with all this. But um, so, yeah, right here is a story by uh, this Martina Barash. It, Alpine loses bid to halt clearing groups, displaying action. It's, it's just great, great news. Um, Case similar to Alpine's win suit. Uh, suit against FINRA to be appealed, broker dealer not likely to succeed. So just, just good news, good news all around and from a legit news, news outlet. So we know that this is, this is for real. Petschke, what's going on? 
It has been a while. Good to see you, brother. Armand is here. M. Echo, who enforces that decision for Alpine? Well, now it's it's the NSCC's, FINRA's, SEC, all of their jobs to enforce this. Now, this judgment came from the NSCC, so I believe it'll be them enforcing it. And basically on the appeals they put up before, they, they had had their hands tied as whether they could enforce it. Now they can. So I think it'll go through immediately, honestly. What's up, Jay Jackson? Uh, no, Matthew, I just talked about that. Lyrical, what's up? All right, let me keep moving here. Let, uh, Ham writes, getting kicked out as a prime broker is a really big deal. Feds, I'm sure, will look into the fraud. Who did business with Alpine hit the Kramers and friends? GTI here, want proof. And he just puts up the old article we've seen a hundred times. Um, also this, Christopher Walker writes, Alpine death knell news is from Bloomberg, not the Basher Daily Times, Herald Examiner. <laughs> Some institutions has a lot of GTI shares to buy to clean up the Alpine ashes. Will GTI clear its prior high? That could be 30 times from here. So hold on. Kids, man, I'm telling you, freaking daylight savings time. <laughs> they don't get caught tired now. It's not, it's not fun. Anyways, but yeah, Alpine. I'm I'm very excited what this means for Alpine. It's just, it's just really good, really good news. Um, and it looks like I'm sorry, guys. The the Rumble chat froze again. I hate when that happens. Sorry, Rumble friends. I will uh I'm going to keep an eye on it. Hopefully it breaks free. That sucks. I hate doing that to you guys. All right. Let's uh, move through here. The, um, oh, what's up, Jackson? That's Heavy Chevy. Okay. You changed your name. I like it. I like it. What's up, Kilvy? So, all right, let's go. We got Alpine is out. Great news for GTI people. Okay. Trento also out. Not great news, but it doesn't change anything because we didn't have that deal anyways. It was never done. Okay, it was a potential catalyst. It takes one potential catalyst off. We have quite a few more. So we're, it doesn't change anything. It just sucks. It was something we all hoped would eventually happen. But now at least this big, giant monster thing hanging over our heads for the last two years is gone. We can move on with our lives. I'm actually okay with that. I'd rather, I obviously, I would have rather it gotten done. But if it's, it, it is what it is. Okay, we're just, we're just going to move on. We're going to deal with it. Um, but the Alpine thing's huge. And then on top of that, I think we're about to see some, some changes in the market with, with CPI coming in like it is, they, they were able to keep it up today, but I do think we're going to start seeing volatility more and more in the, um, in the stock market. And so right here, he brought, he writes, when the talking heads tell you diversification will save you, they're lying. Five trillion in money printed was intended to cause this bubble and concentrate it. They knew it and planned it. In other words, where's the bubble? It's in all the, the big stocks. And you guys know what I, I mean. We've been talking about the bubble forever. Now the Fed and elite are cashing out and they've coordinated the collapse after a 14-year economic cycle. 14 years going back to 2010. You could say 2008, 2009. But, um, but this, I agree with him on this. There is obviously some kind of coordination going on. And whoever knows who all's in it, I don't know. I don't know if the Fed and the administration are together on this. I, I don't know. But I do know this. I really believe Powell is trying to fix the market going forward. And I also know the Biden administration, they're, uh, they're not happy with him. So to me, with the BTFP now being pulled, with all these guys selling for months now, Bezos, Zucker, Zuckerberg, um, uh, who else off the top of my head? I'm I'm losing it right now, but there's been a lot of them and all the insiders are getting out. They're, they're getting out ahead. They're getting out ahead. So why would it go up today when it should have gone down? Well, what a perfect time to trap more people in. They're, they're using the market against us right now. It's, it's pretty obvious. I think today was one of the most obvious ever. I mean, the fact that CPI came in that hot and the market didn't go down, is bonkers it makes no sense it to me it's the most as the market as a whole it's the most fraudulent day i've ever seen in the entire market um as a as a whole since i've been watching the market 
it it just should not have happened. So something's coming. Something's coming. And this is also the first day after BTFP. So think about that. Think about the fact that BTFP is now gone from the banks. They don't have that cheap liquidity uh, access to that anymore. This is the first day without it. Isn't it interesting that it went up? CPI comes in hot the day after BTFP and the markets go up. Does that sound like a trap to you or what? To me, that this looks like a huge, huge bull trap. And so uh, just be careful. We have to be really careful uh, while trading right now, is in my opinion, because I don't. I think we've really entered into um, a phase where nothing's real right now, um, even more so than we were before. Things are starting to shift in that. And today showed me that fraud is just un unreal. So um, let me catch up with you guys. Media. How's my member count looking? Oh, pretty good. Uh, it's it's a little down from earlier in the year, but overall, overall still holding strong. Eric, am I interpreting correctly? I'm guaranteeing 2,000 GTI tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, yes. No, <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> uh, ZJYL, listen, ZJYL is what it is. It's It was always a quick play. Hopefully it still has a squeeze. Everybody I know um, that is big on it, is still in it. As far as I know, the insiders still hold it very strongly. Um, and I think the shorts are just attacking it. It is what it is. If you did it times 20 before the split, it's still around 120 bucks. It's not, it's not like it's been crushed. So I'm not, I'm just not worried about ZJL right now. Um, but I don't have a lot. It's not one of my main ones I'm in. It was just some I'm hoping to catch on the way up. Uh, and hopefully it does something fast. I can make a little money and then buy up more, um, more GTI and finger. Let's see here. Zuckerberg. <laughs> we will win no matter what. Looks like ZJ will go down to five again. Maybe they push a lower. You know, um, Kit was on last night and he said that, uh, he does not expect ZJ well to be able to get to f uh, five because there's so much buying pressure at six. And I tell you what, they really did try to knock it down even lower today. And it, it got bought back up. Like it, it jumped back up. Not that it was green, but it wasn't as low as it started the day. It was really getting attacked. So I don't know. So far it looks like he's right on that. We'll see. What's up miles. Um, Kitties, GameStop earnings on the 28th. Looks good. I, I haven't been following GameStop. Miles says, correct, nothing's real. Everything's corrupted. Got to play this market thinking what the crooks are doing and not fundamentals. That is 100% correct. Uh, couldn't agree with you more on that. Calvin, Russian just announced today they're backing their Rupled XRP. Really? On October 1st. That's interesting. Okay. Kitty says, I have 1,500 ZJ Wells. I might have overcommitted. I still think it's definitely going to jump. Uh, I don't know how high, but I don't think ZJ Wells is going to stay this low for long. Um, I, I, you know, it could go back up to 10, 12, 15 in a heartbeat, in my opinion. Greenbow, can they still produce counterfeit shares without liquidity? Um, so that's a loaded question. Yes and no. Um, the answer is if, if they're in a good position financially, yeah, they can, because they can still afford, um, borrow fees, broker fees, uh, if they're not afraid of margin yet, cause they're in a good position. If they're, uh, if they're playing it right and they're, um, they're actually making money from their shorting. Yes, they can still do it. The difference is, is in GTI and finger, these shorts are trapped deep underwater. They are really out of the money, like way out of the money. And they've been doing this for so long that their position has gotten lower and lower and lower to where they can make any money. And they're just trapped. And because they're trapped, they, they are becoming a bigger and bigger risk by the day. And the bigger the risk they are, the less brokers and banks are going to give them any liquidity or allow them to continue this. If you've noticed, like GTI and Finger have both strengthened their bottoms. To me, that tells me that the, the attacks just can't be as strong right now. They have to be much more uh, coordinated in their attacks, and, and they can't just go all out like they used to on these stocks. Um, now, 
tomorrow they could, you know, finger could go down a dollar. I could be proven wrong on this, but I don't think I am. And I've been watching these stocks now for GTI for a year and a half finger for over a year. And I just don't, I don't see them having that firepower anymore. And to me, that's because the liquidity is drying up and the risk teams on these brokers are just telling them like, you know, we're watching you guys closer and they might be moving margin down. I, I, I don't know exactly. I mean, I'm not there. But I can tell you that that's what makes sense once liquidity dries up. And that's why it becomes more and more of an issue for the short sellers on the counterfeit side. But if they're in a good position, I mean, they can continue doing it as long as they want. Nobody's going to stop them as long as they're making money. But that's not what's happening in Finger and GTI. All right. Have a good night. We will win. On site. That's fine. Once the other stocks squeeze, we'll hop into ZJL. Absolutely. I mean, they're trapped there. So why not? What's up, June? Yeah, I'm talking about GTI. Gretchen, you're a little confused. There's still this big thing, not legal. Tell us about it's still on. We know it's not Trento. Why do we care about the deal? Is it's a bleeping deal? <laughs> yeah, that's right, Gretchen. I mean, as long as they get some done, and I'm telling you, like I, I know the water deal is still out there. That's a 150 million dollar deal, and I also know that um, there's some other stuff they're trying to get done that I can't speak about, but it would be significant. It would be significant. So. Um, just be excited. Um, I think good things are coming for GTI. I think it's trying, they're starting to, I think GTI as a company is starting to get itself back together, um, and back into the fight. I really do. So, all right, let me continue here. All right. So, uh, speaking on inflation, he says the second wave of rate raises hit when the stock market was crashing and the economy was tanking in the 60s, 70s. This was largely driven by the lack of treasury demand due to spending on Vietnam war. Is history about to repeat? Well, he says that because the treasury demand is starting to go down again. And here's the Fed funds rate. Um, I mean, look at that. It's I, Things are getting crazy. When will the people are all wondering about BTFP, which, uh, I mean, that makes a lot of sense why. Thought inflation was gone. Wow, on a three-month annualized basis, super core inflation jumped a whopping 6.9% in February. Core services, less shelter inflation is a key metric the Fed follows, also known as super core. So that's basically CPI minus shelter. Okay. Um, super core inflation up 7% in February. That's nuts. In January, it jumped by 0.7% month over month, biggest jump since September 2022. And February is up another half percent month over month after multiple increases in 2023 all while real, real wage growth is turning negative again. Fight against inflation, far from over. This is ultimately going to be the killer of the market. They are they are just so desperate. The, um, hedge funds, market makers, all the people actually in the market playing it, um, and with the banks dry, liquidity drying up, they're desperate for lower rates. They're getting, and it's, the desperation is going to continue because they want... Once lending dries up, these guys are screwed. These guys are screwed because everything they do at this point is based on on debt. Because once they have, as we're at the point where, I don't know the exact number, but let's say close to ninety percent of investing in stock markets passive ingress, uh, investing from four hundred one ks, all that. It's probably a little bit less than that, but whatever, or maybe it's more. But th that money doesn't move. And they make their money on the, the moving stuff back and forth. And what they use for that is lending money from the banks. They borrow money from the banks. They push it into the market. And then they skim off the profits. They pay back the bank. And then they made money. That's how this works. Well, if all that money goes away from the banks and the banks stop lending to them, they can no longer keep controlling the market up and down. And so they're freaking out right now. Um, this is It's only a matter of time until we start seeing it. Goodwill, the water deal they were waiting on a distributor. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. DB, after trying to go away, still expecting GTI would close an acquisition in the close future. Or what equal deal could they potentially make of non-acquisition? Um, well, DB, it's I don't know exactly. I, I don't know. I know the water deal could happen, but um as far as acquisitions, uh, other things, I just I can't speak. There's only murmurs out there. Ed Chabowski, yes, we're live. DB, you don't understand the potential catalyst for GTI if not acquisition. Well, that's all GTI does is merge with companies. So it's all acquisitions. 
Goodwill, you're not legal fans. Monday video is undo drum roll due to a convoluted nothing. I disagree. I completely disagree. And I can tell you that the, one of the reasons I disagree is because um, I know for a fact that what he has written to the company has started moving things because um, it they the pressure mounted on them to, to have to get something done. And uh, so that's why I disagree. And I think it was actually a very big deal that he, he, he was allowed to speak it out publicly because now everybody's watching even more closely and that's going to put more pressure on the company to actually keep moving to get stuff done. And I'll just tell you that I know that I know that I know there's a lot of people working to get stuff done with GTI right now. So uh, let's see. Eric, can I make a t-shirt once lending dries up? These guys are screwed. Ace. <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll look into it. <laughs> Matthew Parker, counter marketplace. We look good. I totally agree. Uh, Dave, I'm not going to speculate right now. Kilvey, banks and brokerage firms must be getting nervous that liquidity is drying up fast. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to want their money sooner than later, aren't they? 100%. They're going to be going to the places that have borrowed from them, uh, especially places that they've been letting off the hook. So say some trap shorts that maybe haven't been margin called because everything's been good and they've been allowed to skate by. They're going to go looking for their liquidity. You better believe it. That's exactly what happened in 2008. That's exactly what happens when these when the banks go bad. It it starts with the banks. It does because that's where all the money comes from. The money comes from the banks, and it starts with the banks. The banks are drying up. It's it's just a matter of how fast it happens at this point. As we know especially thanks to commercial real estate being a problem. We know that the banks are in deep crap, especially the lower, the smaller banks. I showed you guys the other night, what was it? Five and a half trillion dollars in assets um, are, are with the small banks that are, that are um, considered weak because of um, their fundamentals are bad. Five and a half trillion dollars is going to be up soon to be bought up, transferred, whatever you name it, but that's going to cause a lot of issues so you're excited for gti dividends that's coming closer too yeah well, it's going to be interesting to see what the brokers do on april 29th with those dividends yeah goodwill you don't mean the message you must deliver that oh okay okay i get you thanks goodwill thanks for clearing that up Vin man gti to borrow ford ford's production of the gt supercar <laughs> CJ, it's not trying to be Debbie Downer. You're exhausted. Your chase down 60% hearing it from your wife. Tired of hearing the hopium. Any suggestions how to keep hope alive? Well, listen, I mean, you just have to believe. Like, if you're in this, for, well, hold on a second. If you really got in this because you really believe in it, there's that should be hope enough because nothing's changed except for your expectations. That's all that's changed. Your expectations, my expectations, everybody's expectations. We all expected this to move faster. We all did. And honestly, <laughs> I don't think we were wrong. We can see the data. We can see what's going on in the economy. We can see how crooked these things are. And yet nobody comes to help us. And yet they're able to keep breaking everything they're able to keep just running off as you know crooks overall whether it's hedge funds market makers the the shorts whoever it is the sec just allows them to go the fbi hasn't done anything the secret service hasn't done anything it's not that we were wrong to expect something to get done once we shine a light on it um but the actual overall play of it still hasn't changed. It's just like in the movie, The Big Short. It really is. And it's not a movie. I shouldn't even say the movie. The The true story that really happened in The Big Short is one of the most accurate true story movies ever told because you, you guys know Hollywood. They change stuff from true story movies a lot based on a true story. That one actually is accurate. And the story is those guys saw the data, some of them five years ahead of time, the rest of them three years ahead of time. And it should have happened quick. And they were just like us. They'd see bonds going down and they'd be like, it's finally happening. And then nothing. And they'd like, what is happening? They they want to get downgraded. They'd see, um, you know, uh, 
well, it was different back then, but it's kind of like us, like today seeing CPI go uh, come in hot and then the market goes up. It makes no sense. It's all fake. And so how do you keep hope alive? Well, all I can do is tell you what I do. And what I've done is I just, I believe in these things and I go back to them and I'm like, nothing has changed. And, and so what I've done is I've stopped. One thing I've stopped doing is saying, I think it'll happen here, or I think it'll happen here. I've, I've completely wiped that out of all my expectations, my thinking. I don't make predictions on time anymore. I just don't. It's, and that has helped me a lot because now I just, I know I'm in a fight and I focus on everything going on around and I focus on everything I can do to make a difference, whether it's just talking to you guys about stuff or sharing things or just going on with my life. That's what I do. And by doing so, it removes the pressure to make something happen immediately that I can't. It takes the pressure off for like needing something to happen right away. We just, And that's how I keep hope alive because I know I believe in, in these plays. I completely believe in them. It's It takes a lot of energy to do these lives night after night after night after night. And trust me, the little bit of ad revenue I make off YouTube is not enough to do it for the money. <laughs> trust me, it is not even close. That's just a nice little thank you for doing them, you know. But the the I do it because I believe in them. And I want to keep communicating to you guys I believe in them. And I want to keep talking about the economy and what's going on in our nation because I think information and knowledge is, is so powerful and it does eventually drive change. But if you're looking for me to tell your wife it's going to happen tomorrow or in a month or in three months, I can't tell you that. And that's not hope. So that's why it's not hopium because I'm not giving false expectations. What I can tell you is that if you want to go back yourself, because you know what I, I'll tell you, you've heard it enough. If you want to go back and, and do your own research and look at these plays and say, why am I in this? And you can look at everything going on and you can make two decisions after that. You can say, because I know what the information is. So there's only two decisions to make. One, these are going to be a monster when they run and they have to run because the data is telling me it has to run because this is, and so that's number one. Number two is, is finding a reason not to believe. It's finding a reason not to believe what you're, you see, what you've found, your, the data that you can find. You can either tell yourself, you know what, at this point, I just don't believe any of it's true because I just, it hasn't happened yet. And when's it ever going to happen? Or you can tell yourself that, you know what, even if it is true, I just can't make it. It's, it's too hard. And so you, you quit. So those are the two decisions you can make. You can double down because you know that you know that you know you're in it. You can see what I see. Or you can convince yourself that I still see it, but I don't believe it. And that's, those are the two things you can do. And once you make that choice, then you got to make a battle plan of how you stay in it. If you decide to stay, if you leave, you leave and we bless you. And we, there's no hard feelings. This isn't diamond hands. I don't care if you stay or go. I mean, the only thing I'd say is that if, if you're gone and it does run, I'd feel bad for you. Okay. But if it gives you inner peace, it makes you feel better than, then by all means, like, please do what you got to do for yourself and your family. I don't want your wife. I don't want it to hurt your marriage. That sucks. But what I've done is, you know, I just, I have enough money in it that I don't, I don't keep pouring all my money in it. So it's not like we're, we're struggling financially because I can't, I, I know what I could put in that won't hurt us financially. I don't put in more than I can afford to lose. And, and I just leave it. And I say, as long as I believe in these things, I'm not leaving. And it, it might take five, like, this is my mindset. I'm not saying this is not a prediction. This is my mindset. My mindset is it might take another five years. It might take 10 years. Okay. I'm not going anywhere. Like I, you know, and that's how I think it. And that's how I stay hopeful because I'm not, I'm no longer putting timelines on it. And so I don't get discouraged as easy. Um, Mike, no, I didn't. I started like five minutes early. That's all. I hope they're not investing in a strip club, the GTI strip club. <laughs> That'd be funny. Jack, love the GTI news of or hitting of news after being off the Intel grid so long. I want all of us to get a win, especially. With, uh, amen. Colin Frogstone. Sorry, your opinion. We should have squeezed by now. I that's I mean, it just depends on how much you're paying attention. Need GTI to go to 2K. Wouldn't that be nice? David, regarding MMTLP, would there be any purpose for the brokers to call holders and try to buy back at a cheap price at this time? 
at this point, yeah, their purpose would be so they could actually locate real shares. That would be their purpose. What if Michael Scott was in the picture? <laughs> he would have screwed it up. Colin, GTI and Finger only sucks you're interested in. Okay. Joe, we underestimated the shorts. The shorts are screwed. Toxic note gone. At this point, no new shares coming. GTI and Finger fighting with special dividends this is not AMC. Am, amen to that. Amen. You're 100% right, Joe. Ellie, hi, Ace. I think they're barely holding on, trying to exhaust retail in the inflationary environment. Hope we can all make it till our stocks. Hey, absolutely. Christopher, did I notice the spread on GTI bid to ask? Not sure if it, yes. Uh, the bid to ask, I think, was what, 28 to 58? Pretty big. Uh, pretty big there. Matt, what's up with the change from T2 to T plus one starting March 28th? Oh, I didn't realize it started March. I thought that started in May. Um, what it means is that the shorts and trades, everything, now, now they won't have two days to locate your shares and figure it all out. Now it's one day or T plus one. So two days, it goes down from three days to two days. So it shortens their time frame to manipulate, to to um, mess around with your stocks, with your trades, with their trades, all of it. Excuse me. Um, so it's it's a big deal. It actually is. It, if it was T plus zero, which would be the dream, it happened immediately, they'd have to settle. This just means I have to settle everything quicker. Dave, GTM finger, no dates. You're in for the retirement money. That's how I cope with the BS. Yeah, that's how I look at it. Goodwill, CJ, I'm the biggest realist in this group. I can tell you GTI is a win at this price. Even if you sell when you break even, a safe exit number is 130. I believe it will be there in five, six weeks. So he, Goodwill even says, you know, it should go up four times in his opinion soon. Onsite, stop looking at the stock market altogether. Too much stress. I hear you. How much longer? I don't know how much longer, Colin. The question you got to ask yourself is how long would you be willing to wait if the story doesn't change? If the story doesn't change and the setup is still amazing, how long would you be willing to wait? And you're the only person who could answer that question. Yeah, I don't know if Ham's watching, but I did. We did pray for his son. Um. So Goodwill says he doesn't believe in the big squeeze, but he still believes GTI could go to twenty in a spike. And twenty bucks on when you're paying thirty cents is still massive. So there you go. You're welcome, Melody. Thank you. Kilby, your daughter's getting married in May. Wow. You're using the crummy Canadian dollar. <laughs> Do I think one of our plays could hit before that? Absolutely. I don't know if I could say will, but could? Yeah, absolutely. We're at a point where things, things, remember in 08, guys, it was, everything felt fine, but they, they were like us. The people who saw what was coming were like us. They were reading the tea leaves in the market day after day. They were looking at the economy and saying, none of this makes sense. And then everybody else was going along as if times were great. Everybody was just like, this is great. Market's amazing. Bush was out there saying unemployment's the lowest it's been in forever. Our market is strong, blah, blah, blah. And then one day we woke up and Lehman Brothers is out. Lehman Brothers is gone, crashes. And after that, it was off to the races. The market is collapsing. So it can happen that quick. And that's where we're at. That's where I think we're at. We're at that where one day we could wake up and Morgan Stanley is collapsed. Yeah, I'm just using a name. Morgan Stanley's gone. And it's everything starts collapsing. That's where we're at. We could just wake up one day and that's what could happen. So thank you, US1. I appreciate that. Uh, Nick, what's up? You're 100% right about GTM fingers, like in the big short. Michael Burry was early. He was 100% right, like will be. I, th that's that's the mindset I have, yeah. Um, oh, God, good well, that's a rough one. Um, I, I hear you, Colin. I hear you. It's tough, man. It is. Jerome, you're a swinger only on weekends, though. <laughs> Gretchen, would things be more significant than the Trento deal would have been? Um, Gretchen, I can't say because ultimately this thing's so manipulated that I would say money-wise, you won't get that shot in the arm of the $6 billion overnight, um, at least not as far as I know. But um, but I do think there's other significance to it that um, in some ways might matter more. Yeah, And we'll just have to see if it works out. 
Hedgies have been barely holding on for three years. Well, you know, sometimes that's how it works, Jack. Paul, hi, it's getting here. What did I miss? Richard said we should hear some on GTI deal at the end of month. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, They said uh, it'll be in there March 31st, 10K. So, Gretchen, I see the article, rum share price shout out because they showed interest in TikTok. <laughs> really? I don't think that's why. I think it's because they're cloud announcement, but maybe the TikTok thing also had something to do with it. That would that could have bought in some retail people, but um, Goodwill says at least twenty dollars. <laughs> Big short took three years. Yeah, I think um, I don't know which one of them. It might have been Burry. One of them I think saw it five years ahead of time. So, okay, T plus one is May twenty. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Thirty cents to one thousand is massive. <laughs> Zach, why such a massive difference of price targets between you, Ham, Goodwill, 20 to 750 is massive. What are we missing? Um, because, Zach, it just – for one thing, nobody knows how high it can go, okay? When I say the 1,000, it's because I completely base that off of listening to people like Ham and Pedro, okay, who they they're the ones who've taught me the most about the stock market. And um, and they'll tell, talk about how – it the setup of GTI reminds them of overstock. And so what you what we do when we're calculating those high numbers is we're using this the same numbers overstock had and then and then putting in GTI's numbers into that. So it's a it's a it's a similar run. Okay. Um that so the fundamentals of the squeeze are similar to overstock. And it's based off that. And so if it has a run similar to what overstock did based on GTI having a much higher short interest percentage than overstock, that's where we get those big numbers. That's okay. So somebody like, um, and Goodwill, I don't want to speak for you too much, but in my, just what I've gathered is that you're looking at it from a more chart perspective, just, um, and I don't even know what you're comparing it to, but, but that's where the different numbers can come in. He sees it from a chart perspective that has great upside. I looking at it as a pure short squeeze setup that, is comparing to how Overstock ran in 2019. And that's where the big differences come in. Most of us bought GTI above one. Well, yeah, I'm my average is 197. <laughs> um, oh, thanks, Kilby. Appreciate it. Ramon, do I believe the plays will run together from a 2008 type event or one by one? Um, That's the hardest part to know. That's the hardest part to know. If it is, um, if it's triggered by a singular event that affects everything, um, you know, then they'll probably run at the same time. But if it's a slower pull on, like whatever the catalyst is, if it's a slower pull on it and um, an attack on it or from a liquidity perspective, whatever, then we'll probably get the one after uh, one after another, which is what I'm hoping for. And right now, I, 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 right now I feel like I think GTI is back in the the driver's seat. I don't know why. I just I, that's just going off of the trading lately, and where it seems like momentum's come back to. Um, some some just feels like to me, and this is not a prediction. I'm just telling you guys what I what I'm seeing and feeling from. L- what's been happening the last few weeks. Something feels to me like GTI is going to be first. I don't know why I feel that way. I couldn't point to something and tell you, but I think that the momentum has shifted and I could shift again tomorrow. But as of today, I feel like GTI looks like it's, it's ready to go first um, and then finger next. So, which honestly, maybe that's just me being selfish because I hold more GTI and it would be better for me if GTI ran first and I could jump in a finger. So, <laughs> um Rosie, if GameStop went to 400 finger and GTI could be much more short than GameStop, GameStop should have went higher. That's completely true. Yeah, Rosie, you're you're completely right on that. And that's another factor I put into it uh when I think about the prices. If the naked short is 400 million, a run will cause margin calls. If it hits 20, look out. I agree with you, Joe. And actually, um, it's much more likely it's close to 500 now because the numbers we had last summer were 450. So Matthew Parker, very educated people. 
are in GTI and going to hold for longer. That's exactly right. Boswell, I tried to buy GTI stock through my Vanguard brokerage account and couldn't. A message came up. It's a security. Interesting. A security. Huh. I, that's interesting. Um, I don't know what to say. Joe, GTI is back in first deal dividend Alpine in your opinion. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That could definitely be it, Joe. Gretchen Williamson is live. People should pay the $80 brokers ask for because if you have 100 shares, it's worth 1,000. So this deal must be worth $10 a share. Really? Okay, well, William might know more than me then at this point. He probably does. Colin, how high in the next few weeks could GTI go? I have no idea. But Goodwill says the charts alone tell him that it could break back up to about 130 or so. So, um, Goodwill, Overstock went 40 times, GTI 40 times. Yeah, but Goodwill, that's not, you're not doing the whole thing. Overstock, it's not just based on that 40 times run because that 40 times run was based on um, a short interest percentage much lower than GTIs. I think the short per interest percentage wasn't even 100%. The short interest percentage on GTI, even with a higher float, would be about two to 300%. So it's still much higher. So it'll run higher than Overstock did. It, you're, you're, you simplified it too much. The, um, it's not just the times it ran Goodwill. That's not the only thing we were using. You have to talk to Dozer. Dozer gave me all the numbers and uh, and he created the spreadsheet. Dozer does the calculations on that, and they're they're uh, brilliant. Um, and if you go watch my ChatGPT videos, I break it down how it's done. So it's been so long since I did it, I forgot. Artuk, what's up? You agree if GTI runs first, we can go and jump in other plays back to back. Hundred percent. That's what I'm hoping for. Boswell, in my honest opinion, Oracle, Taiwan Semiconductors, and AMD will go up more disappointed with Apple. Huh? I uh, don't know anything about that. Sorry. Barbara, you bought 161 shares today with 29 cents with Fidelity. Nice. Vanguard doesn't like clients buy Bitcoin ETFs. Really weird. Matthew says GTI will break out Friday, calling it really interesting. Okay. I wonder what makes you think that. That is interesting you brought up Friday, though, because I saw this today. This is uh, an opinion, but let me see if I can find it here. All right, so um, he writes, once again, VIX proves, a, proves the move is pre-planned regardless of the CPI print. Last month, a hot CPI caused a VIX spike. This time it caused it to drop, which I 100% agree with this, 100%. Um, and then he says volatility should hit on Friday, which that's why I'm bringing this up, Matthew, with the large wave hitting at the end of the month. So in, very interesting. We'll see if he's, if he's correct on this. Um, I do, I 100% agree with this first statement as far as this prediction, we'll see. But if volatility starts hitting Friday, that could be very interesting uh, heading into the rest of the month. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes down. Um, also remember next week we get another Fed meeting and you know they're not gonna cut. But will they start talking more about possibility of rate hikes again because of inflation? That's what I'm interested in seeing. Kilby, if F3 key creates naked shares, what's the key on my computer to make naked $20? <laughs> if you figure it out, tell me. Zach, so after the economy market crash, which I trust putting a million into S&P and just live off the average 10% growth year over year? Um, no, and let me tell you why. Um, number one, that 10% uh, growth year over year, Zach, that's only, that's only like 80 to 100 years uh, old. Okay, so that's what's been happening for the last hundred years since the Fed basically came in and S and P was became the S and P as we know it today. Um, and so, what when we go through all this, and I believe that the correction is going to be so bad, and the the political atmosphere is going to be so different, it's going to change things. That I believe that things are going to shift, and they're not going to be able to control the market in the same way as they have in the past. So I would not be looking for it to be $10 or 10% a year for, um, we don't know if it'll ever get back to that being that obvious a gain every year. And I know it wasn't every year, but it averaged out to that. Right. So the thing is, we don't even know how our markets will act 
if if we, if we go through a monumental change. So personally, I would wait. Well, I'll just tell you what I plan on doing. If if things go the way I think they will, if we see a monumental shift in our markets, which means they get cleaned up because of this cr- terrible crash, all the bad deals, assets, all of it gets wiped out. We go through a couple of years where it's hard. We kind of rebuild and we start over in a new way. Um, I'm going to wait a couple of years until I can trust the, the stock market stabilized before I'd get back in, if I ever get back in. Um, and that would depend on it being, you know, um, handled better and actually enforce the rules. Um, so I'm going to be looking at a lot of other ways, uh, places to put my money than just putting it back in the stock market. That's what I'll tell you. So, um, Bill Cooper, 6,500 GTI average 39 cents. What? That's awesome, Bill. Good for you. Um, oh, I, I would be very, very surprised if, uh, GTI doesn't run this year with, with everything going on in the markets, the way liquidity is drying up. Um, I just don't see how they make it another year. This is by far the worst, um, the worst place, the banks and the hedge funds, everybody's been, I mean, I know they're all making money off the tops of the markets right now. Don't get me wrong on that. But as far as, uh, access to credit, as far as, uh, the, the liquidity tightening as things are, they know the walls are kind of closing in. It hasn't been this bad before. Um, not since 08, 09. So not even in 2020. 2020 was just a blip. It happened fast. You keep seeing, oh, quad witching on Friday. That's right, Ocean. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah, that could make things really interesting. You keep seeing the number 18 multiple times daily. What do you think it means? Interesting, Polly. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look into what 18 can uh, can mean. Eat some seaweed. You're concerned any news of GTI couldn't move the price. Would it be inflow that makes it pop? Um, I don't think inflow would be enough to make it pop. It could be enough to raise our floor. But what's going to have to pop is uh, the shorts having to buy in. That's what's going to cause it. And what's going to cause that? Either a margin call because of liquidity getting dried up, not because of buy-ins, uh, liquidity drying up, or um, – or they get busted on a legal end, some aspect. That's that's what I think will actually trigger the squeeze. I don't think there'll be enough buying in to pop it at this point. Um, unless, and this is the big unless, unless they, they get some kind of deal done that's so amazing, it causes hedge funds to buy in with billions and billions. But I just don't think retail has that, so... Goodwill, you get the scale smaller now. I don't want to see anyone in our community get burned like Stong Mom and Dumb Money. Stocks runs a sick feeling. It should be, for, yeah. Well, it's sick until you can sell. But yes, that's why everybody should have um, should sell on the way up. Yep. You think BTFP catching up by Friday? Okay. All the defense company stocks are down? Interesting. Next week, fakes by pump and dump. <laughs> Very possible. At this point, it's always possible. Boswell, 20 years ago, as oil and defense stocks went up, now it's AI. Yeah, and I think the AI thing is, um, I think it's just another tech bubble like two, 2000. I really do. Um, AI is amazing. It's going to continue to grow, but it's also extremely overvalued right now because of the 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 guessing of what is possible and everybody's excited about it. As AI integrates more and more into our lives and and people get more familiar with it and realize the limitations of it, as well as it becomes normalized in other places, the shine will wear off and uh, and these stocks just aren't going to be worth what they're worth right now. It's, they're overvalued. It's a ticker symbol to invest in DJT. <laughs> uh, DWAC is about as close as you can get. Goodwill's girlfriends. <laughs> Oscar, I'll definitely be selling on the way up to take money off the table. Yes, you have to. What's up? So now what? Kryptonian stocks are the higher percentage of retail and trending down consistently while stocks majority institutional own continue to rise. True efforts to shake retail. Yeah. Well, I I I think they're trying to actually get us to buy in because they're selling. Insiders are mostly selling Kryptonian. I think they're trying to get retail to buy in so they can sell. That's what I think is happening. Mad Max, everything will short squeeze before Trump takes office, ass covering time. 
I think there's a high likelihood of that. Yeah, I really do. Well, can he need a GoFundMe page after we get ours? I hope so, Jack. That'd be amazing. Probably not, though, because he has so much property he could sell. But <laughs> do I think the government will bail out the banks? No, I don't. Uh, Pal said it himself last week. He expects banks to fail. That, to me, him saying it like that, and the way he was talking about uh, where what they're doing right now, that tells me he's already planned for it and he's okay with it. The only way I see the government jumping in is some if, if like one of the titans like chase all of a sudden goes down but i don't think they're in that position i think the big banks are actually salivating right now at all these small bank failures because they're going to eat them up they're going to accumulate them the big banks actually it's the reverse of 08 in 08 the big banks were the ones breaking this time it's all the small ones and uh and so that's the big difference i don't th- i don't see the the fed buying it um so i just yeah and also, um, they, I just think they're tied. Their hands are tied on printing money and on cutting rates right now because, which are the big stimulus, uh, the way they do stimulus because of inflation. Inflation's coming in hotter right now. If they do anything right now to stimulate the economy, it will make inflation roar out of control pretty much overnight. They are in such a, a hard place right now. Um, Remember in December, they were basically saying we beat inflation. Everybody thought we'd done it. We had like three months in a row. Inflation went down significantly or again, close to that two marker. Everyone was like, here we go, rate cuts. Since then, three months in a row, CPI inflation has been higher. It's going back up. What do you do when it's going back up in an environment where we're already out of control debt spending? We are way more than we were in 08, by the way. Um, and rates are already at 5.25%. That, that's crazy. They, if they lower the, 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 in, the rates, the interest rates, inflation is going to pop up. They can't. They just can't do it. So in my opinion, they're going to let the banks fail. Yeah, Uh, we're not going to see the same bailouts we saw last time. We just aren't. They just can't do it. Frankie, you have 10,000 GTI average down to 88 cents. Wow. Trim at 10 to get an investment off the 10. I mean, why not? Goodwill, when GTI pops, it'll be random and just go. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um. Who do I want the Niners to draft? I have no idea. Their their draft pick's so low. I haven't even looked at that yet. <laughs> Goodwill says I said at least 20 by my exit strategy includes a yellow batch at a thousand. See, even you've caught the fire. <laughs> Boswell, in my honest opinion, the banks are running out of money. I, that's I think that's more than an opinion. I think that's fact. Is there earning today? I didn't see anything for ZJ Well. So now what? Uh, football sucks. The Packers let go. Arguably the best. Oh, he let go. Aaron Jones. Dude, come on. McCaffrey's the best running back in the NFL. It's not close. But yeah, Aaron Jones gone. Ocean, the b- banks are losing money, but the banks are also losing control. The hundred percent, yeah, exactly. You guys know, you guys, have, you guys know what's up. Um, Boswell, you're buying stocks and holding us on as a long term investment. Media, you don't want to hear any gripes about the Green Bay O line. Chicago doesn't. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. The football guys. <laughs> you guys know I can get in on that. Um, the zero hedge. Inflation hot, consumer prices hit new record high, up 19% since Bidenomics began. Um, let's just go through this a little more. Here's the numbers. CPI rose 0.4% from Jan to February and 3.2% year over year. Both are accelerations from January. That's the big key right there, accelerations from January. Core CPI came in hot at 0.4% month over month and 3.8% year over year. We're, we're almost double that double the 2% uh, rate they're trying to get to. It's just nuts. Oh, here we go. Reverse repo. One of the other places they, they pull liquidity from falling off a cliff declined from more than two twenty five hundred 2,500 billion. That's 2.5 trillion to less than 500 billion since 2023. And you just see it shooting down what's, what's left in the reverse repo markets. So uh, liquidity is, is disappearing. It's, it's disappearing right now. Um, 
China's real estate crisis is getting, wor getting worse. Another big developer downgraded. The real estate thing is huge, by the way, guys. Um, America put a bunch of our investment into buying up Chinese real estate. So this is just another area where assets that were supposed to hold strong and make, make hedge funds rich for decades is drying up quick. Consider the commercial real estate loans coming due in the U.S. in 2024 are even bigger. Moody's downgraded one of China's largest housing developers' credit rating. Vonka, long considered to be financially stable, is one of several major Chinese developers to run into trouble. With Moody's on Monday downgrading its rating to a BA1, indicating a substantial credit risk. Firms' contracted sales had fallen around 40%. I mean, in just in the first two months of the year. It's... It's getting wild out there, and this is this is today. So it's it's just at some point all this has to matter. At some point, this all has to affect the stock market. It just has to. I don't know when, but it has to at some point. Here's other in inflation when we're looking at car insurance, twenty percent, transportation, ten, car repair, seven, hospital, six, homeowner inflation. I mean. It's just it's just out of out of hand. It's the third straight month with both readings being hotter than expected. Markets have priced out three interest rate cuts in 2024 over the last three months. Affordability is still getting worse. So, I mean, what what do we do about all this? It's like you just have to watch it and you have to prepare. That's my opinion. The we can't control when it goes. All we can do is hope and pray that. We, if we do things the right way, it'll work out eventually. That's that's all we can do. I mean the the fact is the economy is a mess. The fact is they're stuck. They can't they can't stimulate this economy the way they want to. They just can't because of inflation. Inflation is the great hedge that if they do anything right now stupidly. They'll blow it up to hyperinflation. And there's a lot of people who believe that it's going to go that way anyways, um, that we've just, we're about to flip again. Um, and, and in my opinion, we're just like where they were at in 06, 07, watching the MBS being a bunch of junk bonds and it just didn't explode yet. But it just kept, the can kept getting kicked down the road. Our hope and my belief is that we invested in something that will catch them when it all goes bad. That's it. That's the entire reason I've been here this whole time because I think we caught them and I think we have something special. The question is, when does it all go bad? When does it finally break? Nobody knows. There's a billion factors at play. But if you guys are reading what I'm reading, it tells me that there's no way they escape this. There's just no way. They need the miracle of all miracles, and I don't believe they'll get it because what they built is fake, it's fraudulent, and it's it's corrupt. And so they can't get out. And that's that's how I see it. And so that's that's where we get our runs, guys. That's where we get our runs because of all this going on behind the scenes, eventually choking them out. And that's and I think, in my personal opinion, it's inevitable. That's my personal opinion. So um all right let's go through here richie i personally think there's too many red flags around us if you put all the pieces together there's too much momentum not to run off the cliff are you talking about I mean, you said around us what, what do you mean by that richie i'm sorry uh, rfks aaron Rodgers would be his vp i know isn't that wild <laughs> um I, I'll let him speak about his son, but I did hear he's good. Repo Biden out of his house. <laughs> David, maybe we can pick up some great real estate deals from the Chinese right here in the US. <laughs> yeah, maybe you could. Have I heard of Aladdin by BlackRock? Yes, I have. Yep. You hope and pray Goodwill's wrong about GTI. <laughs> I don't know. I like having Goodwill here. He, he balances things out. It's good to have. Uh, I like the push and pull. He makes me sharper. Matthew, we have a once-in-a-lifetime chance to make the most out of this downturn. That's what I believe completely. Mad Max, all the can kickings ended. I, I think we're close to that, yeah. Good evening, Dibs. What's up? David, the economy would be a lot better if the if they make these 
short. Yeah, the 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 pay up. Yep, hedge funds pay up. Yep, yeah. Max gun break soon. I agree. I think I don't think they can keep this up uh, until the election. Hopefully, we get the runs. <laughs> get our runs from Taco Bell at two a.m. Oh yes, I've lived that. Mexican. Everything ring sounds so sim- similar to news that was supposed to be AMC pop. Well, the difference is AMC would have popped if they weren't screwed by the the CEO. He sold out AMC. I've said it a million times. I don't need to go back over it. But the point is, is these guys are on our side and they're doing everything to fight for us. That's the difference. And as long as they do, they're trapped. There's no way out unless they're given one. And I don't think they'll be given one. Goodwill, your exit strategy includes 20,000 shares sold from 130 to 1,000 based on your plug and play function. You've been burned on both ends. Oh, yeah, I hear you. That sounds smart. Boswell, we need tariffs on China, get more stuff made here. I agree. Jack, quotes from Team America. It's inevitable. <laughs> Still nothing over your <laughs> Team America cracks me up, man. All the, Anything South Park guys do. Andy says, when GTI runs, I believe it will pass 1,000 a share with all the counterfeits out there. It's inevitable. I tend to agree that, um, I, I mean, nothing's inevitable as far as price range, but I do think that obviously I think the chance is very high. Husker, you watch the big short again. You agree with us catching them in something massive, bigger than we think in your opinion? Probably. And that's what I hope. I hope it's bigger than we think. I really do. I hope that um, the thing is there's a lot more information out now than there was in those times because of the internet and uh, places like Twitter. So we have a lot more info to pull from. So I think our estimations can be a little closer to reality. But I also think, um, I think in some ways it'll be worse and in some ways it'll be better. And I don't just, I'm not just talking about our stocks, but um, my hope is that the system, what they've done with our stocks is so bad that yes, I think it, I hope it rockets way past what we can even dare to hope for but plan plan smartly anyways uh just in case it doesn't <laughs> keith 200 percent above all average volume on gti seems bloomberg article attracted buyers you're probably right about that the last time we had a real big run in gti was last january when we got the first alpine news so like gti is gonna happen zach you want to make enough money to become a professional treasure hunter <laughs> that'd be awesome Vanguard CEO stepped out. I didn't know that. Mad Max, we will post at AMC chapter 11 might not be completely off the table. Hi, man. I, those poor AMC people. <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry, Goodwill. <laughs> I just, okay. You didn't say 20. You said between 20 and a thousand. Okay. Okay. I got you. At least 20. That's what you said, right? I'm sorry. You said at least $20. Sorry, Goodwill. I'm sorry. I'm getting you upset. You, he does think it'll be a GameStop event, but there's so many insiders that can sell on GTI and dilute the flow as much as I want. So that's what he's concerned about, which is fair. John, good evening from sunny Southern California. What's up, buddy? Richie, mean just having all the issues, the market, economy, inflation, so on's going to make our stocks buy. Oh, yeah. Okay. I agree with that. Boswell, if the market crashes before the election, no more Joe in office next year. I mean, he's not going to make it next year anyways. You guys see his like the numbers are still so bad for him. Just like I said, the, the first polls coming out since the state of the union, he's going down. <laughs> he was down one point in the first poll that came out after the state of the union. So it didn't move the needle for him at all. Usually the state of the union should give you like a five point bump. It didn't bump him up at all. So he's screwed. He's totally screwed. Um, so now at 800 million or more counterfeit shares, when she goes, she will go or 600 million or more. Yeah. He sold around four and went good. Yeah. Um, anyways. All right, guys. Well, Hey, I'm going to call it on that. I'm tired. It's been a long day. I have still not recovered from daylight savings time, which is just like the devil. I cannot believe we still do that stupid tradition. So stupid. But anyways, um, back when we were all farmers, I guess it made sense 200 years ago. Anyways, uh, (laughs) but I'm going to take off. Uh, God bless you guys. I'm going to say a quick prayer just to bless us. Have a great night. And again, uh, I mean, I've said it all tonight that I could. Um, inflation's up, which means their options are are much lower than they 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 would want to stimulate the economy and get out of any of this. Stuff's happening. It's only a matter of time. And as far as our stocks, I mean, nothing's changed. 
I think the momentum is starting to grow, though, especially for GTI and everything else as well. So, anyways, bless you guys. Um, uh, and um, I'm gonna I'm just gonna end in a prayer. Please, if you're new, like, subscribe if you like what you're hearing. I appreciate it. Um, and help me break out of what was a shadow ban. And I think it's getting better, but not completely sure. But please, yeah, like, subscribe, share if you don't mind. Join if you want extra lives for three bucks a month. I do that too. So, but anyways, um, yeah, let's just close out in a prayer. All right, Father God, thank you for today. God bless everybody here. Um, I do pray for those who are struggling um, in their relationships or whatever, because it's taken longer than they thought. And uh, I pray that you give them wisdom on how, how to navigate that. Um, and I pray that they, uh, just can find peace in, uh, in waiting if, if the, if the value is really there to them. And if it's not, I just pray that they feel peace to, to go if that's what's there for them. But, um, above all else, I just pray that you, you bring us all wisdom and, um, being here and whatever moves we make as things are getting more volatile and things look crazy on the outside from um, where the economy could go from here. So I just pray justice in the markets, justice in our country, pray for uh, free and fair elections this year um, as much as can possibly be cleaned up in one year. And, um, and with that, I just pray that whatever we go through brings uh, much better days ahead. And it's, it's the corrupt who suffer more than the good people if, if it is a hard time. So, um, bless everybody here and bless our plays in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Bless you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night. I will see you again tomorrow night and Thursday. So have a good night. See ya.